वेलकम टू द फोर्थ सेशन ऑफ वीटीयू ई सेक्शन प्रोग्राम इन इंजीनियरिंग केमिस्ट्री फॉर मॉड्यूल फोर सो इन थर्ड सेशन वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द सिंथेसिस ऑफ पैरा एसिटामोल बाय ग्रीन एज वेल एज कन्वेंशनल रूट वी आल्सो डिस्कस्ड व्हाट आर द मेरिट्स एंड डी मेरिट्स ऑफ this synthesis later we also discussed the one new concept in green chemistry that is atom economy for the synthesis of ethylene oxide and methyl methacrylate by two different methods and also we solved some numericals related to atom economy today i would like to discuss some important applications of green chemistry the first application the green dry cleaning of cloths we know per chloroethylene or in other words you can call it 11.22 tetrachloroethene commonly used as a solvent for dry cleaning it is now later that this perc contaminates ground water and it is also prone for carcinogen a technology known as micelle technology developed by joseph d simmons Timothy Romark and James McLean made use of liquid carbon dioxide and a surfactant in place of PERC for dry cleaning cloths so this techniques overcome the use of PERC therefore it is a greener technique which reduces the carcinogenic effect of this perc second one <clears throat> green solution to clear the turbid water it is observed the tamarind seed kernel powder discarded as an agriculture waste it is a very effective agent to make municipal and industrial waste water to clear it is having a very good coagulating character the present practice is to use aluminum salt that is to treat such water but it has been found that the alum which is used as a coagulating agent increases the toxic ions in treated water and also causes some diseases like alzheimer on the other hand the kernel powder of this tamarind is non toxic biodegradable and available at very low cost so therefore instead of alum or aluminum salt so it is better to use this biodegradable tamarind seed kernel or powder of this uh, tamarind seed kernel as an coagulating agent in order to purify the turbid water the third important application of green chemistry the bleaching agents it is common knowledge that paper industry that is manufactured from wood which contain about 70% polysaccharides and 30% lignin for good quality papers 
the lignin content must be completely removed. It should not contain lignin. So, in order to remove the lignin, <coughs> chlorine is used. Chlorine removes all the lignin content in that. But what happens? The chlorine causes environmental problems. Chlorine also reacts with aromatic ring of the lignin to produce carcinogen product and that causes other health problem to the workers working in the same industry. So therefore, a versatile agent has been developed by Terence Collins. It involves the use of hydrogen peroxide as a bleaching agent in presence of some activators known as TAML or we can use iron along with TAML as a good bleaching agent in order to bleach the last content or the last fractions of the lignin in that paper. So the next application of uh, <coughs> green chemistry in industries. So we know by using vegetable oils such as coconut oil, palm oil, soya oil. As a starting material it is possible to produce a varieties of products such as fatty acids of the methyl esters. Along with glycerol and long chain alcohols. We can use this soya oil, palm oil or we can also use non-edible oils. And when these non-edible oils treated with alcohol, it forms biofuels along with glycerols. And these biofuels called by the name fatty acid methyl esters. So these products in turn used as a starting material for various items used in body care. So glycerol which is formed during the process can be used for the preparation of soap, body care lotions, etc. And it also act as a food for the kettles. So by making use of such, we can minimize the over dependence on other countries for our fuel requirement. Next application, <coughs> packing materials. It has been observed the eco-friendly plastic for packing for packing are manufactured by using starch as a starting material. So using starch as a starting material, it is possible to manufacture a packing material. The starch based material have great potential as they are biodegradable for food packing materials and they will reduce environmental pollution. The functional performance of starch based biodegradable materials can be enhanced, can be improved by adding other biopolymers or by some addition of uh, some additives as well as by using novel preparation techniques. It is also observed starch can be also used to manufacture t-shirts and plastic pots 
एटसेट्रा द नेक्स्ट एप्लीकेशन ऑफ ग्रीन केमिस्ट्री ग्रीन सॉल्वेंट द यूज ऑफ ग्रीन सॉल्वेंट इन केमिकल सिंथेसिस कैन प्रोवाइड द एडिशनल कंट्रोल फैक्टर ओवर द एक्टिविटी एंड सिलेक्टिविटी इन ऑल एरियाज ऑफ कैटेलाइसिस इंक्लूडिंग हेटरोजीनियस होमोजीनियस एंड बायो कैटेलाइसिस रिएक्शंस the company called dupont has developed a process for the production of teflon teflon coated utensils you might have seen and this dupont prepared teflon by making use of supercritical carbon dioxide method instead of trichloro trifluoroethane instead of this compound trichloro trifluoroethane they used supercritical carbon dioxide method so that will reduce the extensive use of this harmful trichloro trifluoroethane greener pharmaceuticals i want to quote the pharmaceutical industry was the first among other industry that recognize the value of green chemistry the drug industry made a large reduction on the use of organic solvents methanol dichloromethanol toluene di methyl amine and acetonitriles required for various synthesis have been minimized it observed that 75% of the industrial reduction in us was occurred during 2004 to 2013 and the use of chemicals has been dropped nearly half i mean 50% and other applications of green chemistry in other industries png we are calling png procter and gamble replaced most of the pvc based materials with alternatives along with other companies png have taken the initiative to develop new solvents so as to replace volatile organic carbons in glassy paints greener synthesis of ibuprofen this is a medicine we might have seen launched by this basf involves half the number of steps as compared to the conventional or traditional route that is this medicine prepared by basf reduced 50% steps of the conventional route and the atom economy for this synthesis is almost double than the old synthesis so that will reduce the discharge of so many gases toxic gases into the environment and it also reduces the cost of the manufacture of ibuprofen the warner babcock institute for green chemistry which developed a green hair dye called hair print this institute that is warner babcock institute for green chemistry developed the hair dye called hair print 
which is non toxic vegetable based product providing an alternative to the toxic skin irritating and carcinogenic dyes available in the market and the walmart this is a walmart you might have seen walmart has been using bioplastic in packaging wherever possible on similar line a nokia company a mobile manufacturing company used 50% bioplastics in nokia 3311 evolve phone cover as well as in nokia c7 phones the california based one startup called by the name new light technologies which was founded in the year 2003 took a founding funding of uh, 9.2 million dollars us dollars for developing a carbon negative technologies and that will combine air with the methane that is removing the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere are sequestering more co2 than what it is emitted so all these are the some applications of uh, green chemistry and what are the future challenges of green chemistry it's just the assumption what are the challenges in near future for green chemistry the first challenge for the green chemistry transformations utilizing energy rather than material utilizing energy rather than material second one efficient splitting of water by visible light splitting of water by visible light third solvent system that effects efficient heat and mass transfer while catalyzing reactions and intrinsically adding in product separation fourth one development of synthetic methodologies toolbox that is both atom economical and benign to human health and environment fifth challenge that is plastic and polymers design for innocuous degradation that is degradation without causing any environmental impact or an impact over the environment through the use of additives free design the sixth one material design for recycle or for reuse decisions based on embedded entropy seventh the development of preventative toxicology i mean preventing the toxic uh, character where increasing the knowledge of biological and environmental mechanisms of actions are continuously incorporated into the design of the chemical products and the last but not the least less energy intensive manufacture of pv shell that are more efficient we have other 3 4 this less energy intensive manufacture of pv shell that are more efficient 
and the ninth one that is development of non combustible non material intensive energy resources the tenth one value added consumptive fixation use of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases at high volume eleventh one transformation preserving sensitive functionally without the use of protecting groups or deprotecting groups and last development of surfaces and materials that are more durable and do not require any coating and cleaners so these are the some challenges of green chemistry in near future they are just assumption let's come for the another one that is green fuels come across a word green fuels that is the green fuels are nothing but the hydrocarbon biofuels produced from biomass sources through variety of biological and thermochemical process so biofuels are the liquid or gaseous fuels produced from biomass resources and they are used in place of diesel or in addition to the diesel to a some extent to some proportion or to the petrol or to the other fossil fuels for transport sector for portable and other applications few years back the indian railway used biofuel 10% biofuel that is they used 10% biofuels for the diesel and earn nearly 9000 crores per one year the biofuel can also be referred as a substitute for fossil fuels sourced mainly from a range of agriculture waste or agriculture crops and energy crops forest and waste streams examples the sources includes energy crops such as jatropha hunge waste oils and other kitchen or food waste agriculture and forest waste industrial bio waste and more novel feed stock such as algae currently many governments across the world have implemented goals to replace a certain percentage of transportation fuel and natural gas by biofuel and the demand with biofuel and this trend looks likely to continue in near future and what are the biomass i'm just telling here now biofuels are derived from the biomass and biomass is nothing but it refers to the biological material derived from the living or recently dead organisms so that is used as a feed stock in order to manufacture the biofuels in order to prepare the biofuel we are using biomass and biomass is nothing but the mass obtained from the living things are recently dead things so although biomass can either be burnt or combusted in isolation or it is burnt along with coal in order to generate electricity 
it can also be converted to liquid transportation fuels called bio liquids or biogas for gas specific power generation the main factor driving the use of biofuel forward include need to secure our energy supplies reduce our over dependence on other countries need to reduce our over dependence on other countries are over dependent on fossil fuel and also it will reduce the greenhouse gases emission and that greenhouse gases are responsible for climatical change according to the international energy agency that is iea suggested that by 2050 biofuel will meet 20% of total global transport fuel demand as well as a say nearly about 2.1 gigatons of carbon dioxide emission per year that would otherwise have been produced from fossil fuels and how these uh, green fuels or biofuels are to be classified how to classify the biofuels or how to classify the green fuels the biofuels are classified into first generation biofuel so what do you mean by the term first generation that is first generation biofuel were produced directly from food crops by extracting or abstracting the oils and these oils are converted into biofuels or biodiesel using a transesterification process or some other process the crops such as wheat sugar are most widely used for this production as a feed stock for bioethanol and the use of these wheat and sugar for the production of these uh, biofuel it create the crisis between fuel and food in the market that is the supply of the food items into the market will decrease and cost of the food item will increase and as a result it causes the crisis between fuel versus food whether you want fuel or food we want both so in order to overcome the demerits or drawbacks of the first generation biofuels or first generation green fuels second generation biofuels are available in market so when in second generation biofuels that has been developed to overcome the limitations of the first generation biofuels they are produced from non food crops such as wood organic waste food crop waste that uh, we may consider that is burnt oil a restaurant used oil and specific biomass crops even animal fats and uh, this eliminates 
the main problem with first generation biofuels where the biofuels are green fuels are prepared by making use of food crops like wheat and sugar whereas in here we are using a waste waste is converted into energy maybe the animal fats of the from the dead animal fats organic waste food crop waste kitchen waste etc etc and second generation biofuels are also aimed being more cost competitive in relation to existing fossil fuel if you prepare the biofuels or if you prepare the green fuel by making use of waste the cost of the preparation becomes less so that will helps to overcome the expense over the fossil fuel what we are paying so third generation biofuels the third generation biofuel or third generation green fuel is based on improvement in the production of the biomass it takes an advantage of specially engineered energy crops such as algae as its energy source by making use of algae they are preparing green fuels and uh, these algae are cultivated at low cost and they are high energy entirely renewable feedstock it is predicted that algae will have the potential to produce more energy per acre than conventional crops algae can also be grown using a land and water which is unsuitable for food production we can cultivate these algae in a land which is not suitable for food production crops and uh, let me know the merits of green fuels where i am using biofuel that is nothing but the green fuel merits of the green fuels any green fuels some of the merits in general i am quoting so the green fuels as i am using biofuels are renewable source of energy unlike petroleum based resources unlike petroleum based fuels like petrol diesel kerosene they are renewable energy resources and these biofuels can be used in existing diesel engine existing engine without any modification without any much modification they can be used they have high flash point which helps for safe handling and for storage so it has less greenhouse gas emission so just uh, this is very important the greenhouse gas emission if you compare from fossil fuel conversion and uh, green that is a uh, green uh, fuel conversion so these green fuels reduces the greenhouse gas emission it has been also observed b20 b20 means uh, in a mixture if you are using 80% uh, diesel and uh, 20% uh, biodiesel you call it as a b20 80% uh, conventional diesel and 20% uh, what you call this uh, biofuel so this b20 will reduce carbon dioxide by 15% just think of it by 15% it will reduce the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere this carbon dioxide is uh, mainly Are responsible for the increase in temperature on this earth, global warming. 
and these biofuels can be grown, produced and distributed locally. You can produce at local areas, yes, a local areas, it will provide a jobs to the rural peoples because our country is enriched with the rural areas, so it provides more jobs for the rural peoples. Lower emission of contaminants that is carbon monoxide, particulate matters, then polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and aldehydes into the environment. During combustion, these emissions will be very, very low. And it is very important, the green fuels, I mean here biofuel, can be blended with other energy resources. So, as I told, we can use it as a B20, you can use it as a B40, you can use it as a B60, you can use it as a B80 or like that. Depending upon our requirement, we can use B40, B60, B80 like that. The lubricating properties is very high for these biofuels that will increase the life of the engine, enhance the life cycle of the engine. I told this one, uh, jobs for the rural people will increase and uh, very important is the biodegradable. It will decompose without causing any adverse effect to the environment. And the byproduct obtained during the synthesis of these green fuels, that is what you call a glycerin or glycerol, has a commercial values. And this glycerol is used for the preparation of a hand sanitizer, soap, other cosmetic materials and it is also having some demerits, biofuels, biodiesel or green fuels are also having some demerits that higher, slightly higher energy consumption due to lower calorific value. The calorific value of the biofuel is lesser than that of the conventional design. It means we have to burn more fuel in order to get the energy compared to the diesel, in, diesel oil. And uh, sometimes the biofuels or uh, green fuels have higher emission of oxides of the nitrogen compared to diesel fuel and they have high freezing point compared to diesel fuel and would could uh, be inconvenient to use in cold climatic conditions. And uh, it is less stable compared to diesel fuel, therefore long term storage, for example, storage of these fuels more than 6 months is not recommended because it will decompose. Storage of these biofuels or storage of these green fuels more than 6 months is not recommended, it may undergo decomposition. So, the next uh, part of this uh, green chemistry is the hydrogen. So, under this we are going to study the production of hydrogen by making use of water. So, what are the applications of this hydrogen? 
you know hydrogen is the most abundant element on earth in its way to becoming the world's fuel of choice at present it is a fuel of choice and uh, it is observed the industrial production of hydrogen has an, a market to a value of uh, say 100 billion us dollar it's a more than 100 billion us dollars and is still increasing rapidly every year especially that is uh, in case of uh, developing countries or even in developed countries and this hydrogen is the fuel of the choice at present for the fuel shell and hydrogen is not found in appreciable or exploitable concentrations freely on earth not available in appreciable quantity on earth freely instead must be produced from other compounds like water it is possible from the for the preparation of hydrogen from other compounds hydrogen may be produced by the electrolysis of water by making use of electrical energy here electricity is used to break down the water molecule into its components which gives oxygen and hydrogen with uh, no thermal or polluting side products we can prepare the hydrogen without causing much adverse effect to the environment I repeated once again telling hydrogen is widely considered to be the fuel in powering of non-polluting vehicles how hydrogen powered or hydrogen fueled cars are available that Tesla the company is manufacturing these uh, hydrogen cars in near future domestic heating and aircrafts the abundant supply of water and sunlight that offers us an affordable alternative source to produce hydrogen that is excess available of water excess available of sunlight forced the scientist to prepare this hydrogen as an suitable alternative to the fossil fuel and even for the biomass and how to manufacture how to prepare this hydrogen from water as said it is possible by electrolysis of water by making use of electrical energy water can split into its components like hydrogen and oxygen and hydrogen and oxygen both are useful for some other ways the first one photo electrochemical water splitting I repeat photo electrochemical water splitting you call it uh, PEC in short it is one of the potential technique for clean solar hydrogen production by making use of solar energy the production of hydrogen happens and is utilized in small to large scale hydrogen generators so what is the basic principle behind this PEC PEC that is it is based on the conversion of light energy into electricity within a shell 
involving two electrodes which are immersed in an aqueous electrolytes. The two electrodes are inserted, are immersed in an aqueous electrolytes and which converts light energy into electrical energy of which at least one of the electrode is a semiconductor material which is exposed to the light so as to able to absorb the light and this electricity generated is then used for water electrolysis first it generates the electricity the electricity that is generated during this process is used for water electrolysis. So there are three main options for the arrangement of photoelectrodes in these PECs. We are using two electrodes immersed in the aqueous electrolytes. And there are three combinations. It is possible to have three types of combinations. What are the three types of combinations for this process? The first combination, photoanodes, we can use made of N type of semiconductors and cathodes made of a metal. So here anodes are made up of uh, N type of semiconductors and cathode by metal. Second one, photoanodes made up of N type of semiconductors and photocathodes made of P type of semiconductors. Here, photoanodes are made of N type of semiconductors and uh, photocathodes are made up of P type of semiconductors. And third one, Photocathodes are made up of P type of semiconductors and the anodes are made up of a metal. So I would like to discuss the working principle of this PEC, how it works in my next session. Thank you.